My guest today is Robert Anton Wilson, author, extraordinaire, and eclectic man. Um, Robert, you've written some 25 books in the last 20 years, so I'm not going to begin to list them. But can you go down a few of the your more popular ones? Well, the, the best seller of them all so far is the Illuminatus Trilogy, mm -hmm. which I co-authored with Robert Shea. And the Schrodinger's Cat Trilogy, and uh, right now Penguin is publishing my historical Illuminatus Chronicles, of which there are three novels out right now in right. paperback, uh, The Earth Will Shake, The Widow's Son, and Nature's God. Right. And then I've written a lot of nonfiction books, too, such as Prometheus Rising and Quantum Psychology mm -hmm. and Cosmic Trigger, and I guess that's enough. I, right. Uh, I could get carried away and mention all 25. <laughs> well, the, the, the writings that you've done that are specifically intriguing to me are obviously about the Illuminati. Um, for those viewers or listeners who are unfamiliar with that term, uh, what, what, can you define Illuminati for me? Yes, the Illuminati is a convenient metaphor for people who've never heard of Murphy's Law. <laughs> Uh, for those, uh, uh, Murphy's law is that if anything can go wrong, it will. Uh, the corollary is Heinlein's law. Things will go wrong even if they can't. Mm -hmm. Murphy was an optimist. Mm -hmm. uh, people who don't understand that need an explanation of why things always uh, go wrong. Mm -hmm. And the Illuminati is one of the favorite explanations with the more esoteric uh, uh, mm -hmm. metaphysical conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. The uh, historical Illuminati was founded May 1st, 1776, by a former Jesuit uh, named Adam Weishaupt, which is sinister already because, as Victor Hugo pointed out, anybody who was educated by the Jesuits is untrustworthy <laughs> even to himself. Uh, uh, Weishaupt formed the Illuminati as a secret society within Freemasonry. Hmm. Which uh, itself is a secret Which society. itself is a secret society. A mystery within a mystery. Yes, and this technique has been copied quite a bit. There was the Molly Maguires in the last century, which was an Irish revolutionary group inside the ancient order of Hibernians, which was a secret hmm. society. <laughs> So that was another secret society within a secret society. And, and in recent years in Italy, there's been one scandal after another about Pei Due. Pei Due is a secret society within the Grand Orient Lodge of Egyptian Freemasonry, mm. which is the biggest Masonic group in France and Italy. Mm. And within that, a fellow named Li Chio Li formed another secret society called Pei Due, which turned out to be involved in her laundering heroin money for Arab terrorists, cocaine money for South American terrorists, and arms deals and uh, processing the money through the Vatican Bank mm -hmm. by way of Archbishop Marchinkus and Roberto Galvi, who ran the Banco Ambrosiano, which was closely affiliated with the Vatican Bank. Well, which leads a lot of people to think the Illuminati never went, uh, never disappeared. It just kept changing its name. Yeah, it's definitely the pinnacle of conspiracy theories. It's oh, yeah, there is no conspiracy theory as weird as the ones involving the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other meaning of Illuminati in occult literature, which is uh, ascended masters or perfectly enlightened beings or something like that. So we've got basically the Illuminati, there are basically four attitudes. They exist, they don't exist, uh, and if they do exist, they're the good guys or they're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And that's why I find the Illuminati such a fascinating metaphor, because I think the novel in the modern world has got to reflect uncertainty. That's why in my nonfiction I've written so much about quantum physics, which right. deals with uncertainty. Yeah. And the Illuminati is the perfect symbol of uncertainty because no two people who set out to study the Illuminati have ever come to the same conclusions. <laughs> right. Now, your very style of writing has been described as postmodern. 
Uh, yes, uh, I've been called postmodern and deconstructionist, yeah. and I didn't know about either of those movements until I had published most of my books. Uh -huh. Then I looked back, and it's true, I am postmodern and deconstructionist. Uh -huh. There's also a strong streak of ethno-methodology in my books, which I didn't know <laughs> was ethno-methodology until somebody wrote me a fan letter right. telling me I was the leading uh, writer in the ethno-methodology methodology tradition within <laughs> science fiction and I said gee you gotta look that up <laughs> <laughs> that's great well it's, uh, okay so we defined Illuminati as the secret society that is either in, enlightened beings in some way helping us or n unenlightened beings in some way controlling us um, so well, maybe they're unenlightened beings who think they're enlightened <laughs> <beings>. <laughs> yeah four ways to think about it you mentioned 1776. Um, we know that our forefathers, Thomas Jefferson and these guys, were uh, Masons themselves. And a lot of the symbology used in the dollar bill, for instance, um, has occult roots. Uh, tell us a little bit about our forefathers' connection with these. Yeah, well, most of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons, whether they were members of the Illuminati or not. Okay. Uh, that's very uh, that's uh, that's an open question, but right. they were most of them were Freemasons. Jefferson uh, was accused of being a member of the Illuminati by one of the fanatic Federalists at the time, mm. when the Federalists and the Jeffersonian Republicans were first splitting, uh, when the two-party system was just beginning. Right. There were a lot of paranoid theories about Jefferson spread by the Federalists, and one of them was that he was the leader of the Illuminati in mm. America, which is a a theory I love because Jefferson is one of my heroes, and yeah, uh, to right. give him a sinister side yeah. makes history yeah. even more ambiguous. Yeah. Although I prefer the theory that George Washington was really Adam Weishaupt. Oh. Uh, Weishaupt, after he disappeared from Bavaria, murdered Washington and took his place, according to this theory, and oh, I like right. that one. Yeah, uh, you can look at the dollar bill. Uh, with, uh, which one is it? And then you turn it over, and there's that spooky Illuminati pyramid. What does yeah. that mean? Does it mean that God is San Paco? Mm. Or does it mean that uh, only G only uh, the, uh, Masons and uh, and G geo uh, students of geometry can understand the world? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how we take these symbols.